Today we're going to unbox and get first stitches on our Janome JW8100 sewing machine. So today's video is going to be the unboxing. We, in another video, perhaps the next video, we're going to tear this down and see what's inside the machine and see if it's really worthy of that Janome name and is going to last longer than what we would expect our Singer uh, sewing machine to last. So let's see what's in here. Alright, we got this little card. Looks like this is the card that usually slides in underneath the machine somewhere. We'll find out about that. This one actually comes with a manual, which if you remember the Singer, I think it was the Heavy Duty, didn't really have a manual with it at all. You, they just basically said, hey, why don't you go online and figure that out. Uh, so that's not bad. Warranty and some other exclusive benefits. Some other goodies we're getting out of here. So before we get to the machine, we got some other goodies that were inside. We got this bag right here that has a walking foot, which is pretty handy. Got some needles. Little thread holder. We got this little doodad. I have no idea what it is unless that attaches to it. Yep. You got one of these feet. I, you got one of these cool little screwdriver, three way screwdriver things. couple of other presser feet. Pretty much the stuff you would expect. And this very same seam ripper that you get from Singer and Juki for that matter. But we know we don't like that one. We like this one right here. Sewing so machine repair guy. Seam ripper. That's my favorite. Tired of destroying your fabric with your seam ripper? Do you spend too much time removing your zipper? Does your itty bitty unpicker hurt your gripper? Introducing the Sewing Machine Repair Guy Seam Ripper. It has a ball that helps prevent damage to your precious project. It's very sharp and picks seams with ease. It is large enough to feel comfortable in your hand. Just pull off the cap and start to rip and rip and rip. No need for small pokey sticks that destroy your dress. Just grab and go without any stress. Keep it in your notions drawer, your machine storage box, or keep it in your socks. It fits in the palm of your hand and is powerful enough for jobs that are grand. And when you are done, it goes right back and stays protected with its cap. Just pull off the cap and start to rip and rip and rip. How much would you pay for one of these miracles of engineering? $50? $30? No, the Sewing Machine Repair Guy Seam Ripper is only $11.99. But wait, order right now from our Etsy store and you'll receive not one, not two, but three seam rippers for only $11.99. But that's not all. Order today and we'll throw in an official Sewing Machine Repair Guy sticker for free. That's a $500 value for only $11.99. And if you order right now, we'll even ship it to you for free. Only available at Sewing Machine Repair Guy Etsy store. And then we've got a couple of bobbins. They're not pre-wound, so not as good as the Brother sewing machine, which had those pre-wound. That was the Brother Star Wars Edition embroidery machine. Okay, we got a little... Looks like a pin cushion of some type. And it attaches to the machine. Now isn't that cool? Look at this thing. A little pin cushion that attaches to the top of the machine. Well that's kind of cool. Got our Chinese writing there. And there's some in English on there somewhere. We got a power cord, standard power cord, and then we've got a table very similar to the 9960 
the Singer 9960, where it has this table that has four legs on it. Yet this one says Genomi. But y'all aren't here just to see all this stuff. You want to see the machine. And here it is. No, this is the cover. It's nice that it comes with a cover. Uh, Singer 9960 has a cover cover similar to this, and uh, but its cover it's bigger. This one's more slimline than that one. It's not bad. It's got uh, these are felt pads inside to keep your machine from getting banged up. And here we go, our Genomi JW8100. Right inside we've got our foot pedal. So this one uses a separate foot pedal power cord. Okay, so let's take a look at the machine. I'm looking on the outside of this machine. So it's got your typical side dispenser. Uh, you can put one on top, I'm sure. Where does this pin cushion go? Is it right there? That makes me happy. <laughs> okay. So we're looking over our machine. We're set in the middle, so four. It goes up on your tension to nine and goes down to zero. So four is right there in the center, so that's good. So this one's got a frosted cover. If you look at that, it's got a little frost to it, and it's got a little clear opening over there where you have some measurements. And not a wound bobbin. You got an empty bobbin in the machine. So the first thing you got to do is wind a bobbin on this machine. It does come with a, a needle installed. Look on the back. Pretty straightforward. This is the switch right here. You gotta watch out when that switch is there. If you switch that, you're gonna drop your feed dogs. So if you're ever using your machine, the feed dogs drop down below and they won't move your fabric. You have probably hit that button on accident. That little switch there, you need to switch it back. Uh, question, so in the comments below, do you ever use that? Do you do uh, darning or free stitching where you don't use the feed dogs and you drop your feed dogs? Uh, put a comment below, please let me know. I'm curious because I, uh, I personally don't think many people use that, but I could be wrong. Okay, what do we have here? What, what, what is the meaning of this? What's going on here? Really? Is that is that really what we're getting here? That's your accessory box. Um, am I the only one that thinks that that's hard to get to while you're sewing? I mean, all right, work with me here, people. So I want to get my stuff out and pull it out, and now it's all over my table. Well, am I missing something here? I can put stuff in a little baggie. Uh, yeah, let me know if I'm missing something. I'm going to look through the instructions too and see this looks like it's supposed to be used for something. Alright, I'm looking at my instructions and it tells me that this pin goes in here. Wow, that seems... All right, and now we've got our little stitch cheat sheet up here. Flips down like that when you don't need it. Flips up when you do need it. We got our little pin cushion up here. We got all the tools in here. Even got the... Oh, oh, oh. Things falling out. So we have our walking foot in here. Probably not where it's supposed to be, but we got it to fit. We got everything else inside, so it actually all goes in there, so that's that's good. And we also have 
this, which we got to see it with this on, right? Nice little table. I chose the wrong spot to put that bobbin. Okay, so now this should just slide right in there. And now we have our table and it's not bad. Could use a little height adjustment, but that's easy enough to do because the, the feet screw in and out on here to adjust your height. So that's not bad. I'm pretty impressed. Looks good so far. We haven't turned it on yet though. We got to get some first stitches out of this thing. And in the next video, we're going to pull it apart and see what's inside, what makes it tick. Now I say the next video, but the thing is I owe you a video on the Sailrite servo motor. Uh, this video I'm doing because of the timing with my shop right now, we're doing some renovations and I'll show you that here at the end of the video, a little sneak peek of my renovations that are going on. But for right now, we are doing this. I've had this Janome JW8100 in the shop for a very long time and I haven't unboxed it for you and I haven't taken it apart for you. And I wanted to get this video out there so that I could show you this sewing machine because we have very few teardowns in on the channel. And I want to do some more of those because I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite things to do. So here we go. Let's wind us a bobbin. We've got it plugged in. We've got our bobbin on here. Let's turn it on and see what the screen looks like. Not bad. Okay, we had a pretty good sound. It knows that there's a bobbin on there. It's telling me bobbin and then showing me the foot pedal. So the next step is going to be pushing this foot pedal. Okay, I like how it kind of ramped up the speed there. It's not bad. I will say it's a little slow. This is, you want bobbins to wind a little bit faster than this. But it's not too bad. I'm not going to do a full bobbin. That's good enough. This is the same that you're used to on every other machine that has a top loading bobbin. And then we don't have a cutter or anything in here, so we don't have those sort of bells and whistles. We'll do four layers of cotton. Okay, I can already see this sign right here. You can feel it when you're doing this. So the sign you'll probably want to be up or removed from the machine while you're sewing. And let's see, here we go. Okay, that's the straight stitch. So what does this mean? Zero, zero is the straight stitch. Okay. What's zero, one? Are you kidding me? Okay. I don't know what's going on there. We lost tension. Look at that. I tried stitch number one. So I must have done something wrong. Anytime we lose our tension, we are going to pull out the thread and rethread our machine. As it turns out, we have the technology to look at very close up stitches. And what I'm trying to show you here is, okay, see, that's where we messed it up. There on the left. And then as we move it over, you see how some of these stitches, you see the black stitch right there? Bring it on over, then you don't see it. So there, Right there, you can see the black stitches, and then you don't see them, and then you see them again. It's a very uneven 
tension. And the thread is pretty good quality thread as far as I know. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but we are going to sew some more. So we're going maximum width and then we're going to one millimeter stitch length. So this one says maximum seven millimeters. That's pretty intense for a zigzag. And we do in indeed have the zigzag presser foot on. So we're gonna give this a go. Do you hear that sound? Something's not happy inside of there. And it's, you can hear it happening in waves. And you can see it. Oh my, can you see it? All right, let's go back to our macro lens. Now you saw me come straight out of the box with this thing. Now the next thing I'm going to check is, I checked the upper thread, I didn't check the lower thread, so we're going to check that next and make sure that I didn't make a mistake with my lower thread. And we'll look and make sure, but that is not good. That should not be doing that. So the upper stitch for the zigzag is not too bad. It's just that lower stitch. I got a little stringer off of here. I'm gonna cut that off and maybe that, that could have caused something. It's possible. I don't like how that's... Although it wouldn't, it shouldn't come up like that. I think, it seems like there's a lot of play in there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna follow what they gave me. So it should be coming down off the left-hand side. And then we go through here, and then we go up here. And it pulls, okay. We'll give that same stitch a try again. And 99% of the time, the problem is with the person operating the machine. So let's see if we had an operator error. That sounds a lot better. Sounds very consistent. I think it might have been that string that I left in there. Oh yeah, definitely operator error. Much better the second time, I just had that little strand of thread left on my bobbin and it created that huge ugly mess on that zigzag. We're trying stitch number one again. I'm still com confused about that. I feel like it should be doing a back stitch by itself. Oh, there it goes. It did it. And then when I stop, I feel like it should do it again. But if it doesn't, then I just start again, right? No. Boy, am I confused. Uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong in the comments below. Uh, hopefully you've been yelling at me ever since the beginning of this video for uh, making mistakes. And let me know what I'm doing wrong for that back tack. It did it great in the beginning. And then, and that is a nice stitch. Let me tell you, much better. Much better when you actually thread your machine correctly. Okay, I was worried. I thought out of the box we had a problem. And then I realized um, I was part of the 99% of the time where the problem lied with the operator. 
So I'm glad we were able to figure that out together. Uh, this is what happens when you're using, using a sewing machine. Uh, I like this machine. I think that's a really cool touch right there. <laughs> in fact, my daughter came in here uh, to say goodnight and she immediately went towards this. She's 10 years old and she immediately was like, hey, that's cool. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, it's a very uh, good machine. We're going to do some testing on it in the next video. And uh, one thing I would say about it is the speed is probably a little bit lower than what you want and we're, we're all the way up on the speed. So speed is a little bit lower than what you, would, what you might want, but we're going to measure that in the next video, as well as taking this whole machine apart in the next video and seeing what's inside and seeing how it differs or maybe is similar to some other machines that are out there. Uh, Janome is a pretty good name in the sewing machine industry and they, uh, they charge a little bit more for their machines because they have a good name. So we're going to check that out and I already said, you know, I kind of like how they give you an actual book. Uh, the other, you know, like Singer um, just wants you to go online. Uh, Brother gave me a bunch of books with that machine, but I think part of that has to do with the fact that it was an embroidery machine. So, all right. The last thing I want to do before I let you go is I want to show you, give you a little preview of some of the stuff I've done around the workshop here. I'm going to call it the studio now. So this is now my uh, studio and I'm going to give you just a quick little view of the studio and then we'll call it a day. Okay, that's the back wall right there. And that wall is where dad's machine lives right now. And there's a window in there now, which is new. So this is a portion of my garage that I put a window in and uh, I can look out and see my kids when they're playing outside or whatever I need to do if I have the, the big garage door open. You can see it over there on the left, we've also got a air conditioning unit that has exhaust that's going outside. And then there's also power for that underneath. And the walls are covered with moving mats, which is very good for a studio environment in order to keep the sound levels working all right. And then when you look over here, this is how I hide all of my sewing machines from you. So I made curtains out of these moving blankets so that we can hide all of our stuff that we don't want you to see in the videos. I've got tools up here. I've got some of the stuff that I sell on my Etsy store. I keep over here. You can see the stickers and um, various things that we sell. And then some customer machines and then also my machine. So this machine right here is one that's coming up in a video and this one right here is a pretty good one. So it's going to be a good video for that one. And then a few other machines that I have for parts machines or maybe there'll be machines that I do a video on fixing up, uh, restoring. Well, not really restoring. I don't do full restorations. I do mechanical restorations. I just get it working again. So we may see that in a future video. So I just close it up and it's like it was never here. I've got more to do. All of my countertop space is going to be changing. So the countertop's going to be lower and I'm going to have a, a more continuous work area over there for the videos and hopefully that will work out pretty well. I'm kind of excited and it's just going to be a lot more work for me and that'll be happening in the coming weeks. So you'll just see a video one day where I'm using a different uh, workstation and work, different countertop for the video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed like what you see. And if you like it, uh, consider being a Patreon and helping me out. I get so much help from my Patreons. It's, it's um, ridiculous. Uh, if you ever wanted to have access to be able to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, Patreon is the way that that can happen as well. But I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.